ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today I'm just bringing you guys a quick video asking the question, or answering the question, I should say, uh, should you upgrade off your X370 motherboard if you're planning on getting a Ryzen 2 CPU? So will you upgrade from X370 to X470? Is there a point in that? Well, today we're going to be checking it out. So representing the X370s, we have this guy right here, which is the ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero. And then representing the X470s, we have the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon AC. As far as the CPU goes, testing with the Ryzen 5 2600X. I selected this one because it's a 95 watt TDP. And of course, if you don't know, uh, Ryzen 2 CPUs have Precision Boost 2 and XFR 2. Basically what that means, if you have good cooling, it'll boost up higher on all cores uh, for a longer, so it'll hold closer to its top turbo speed. Won't go hold it completely all the time, but it'll go get closer to it. So that's always a good thing. And that's really the main difference, or well, one of the main differences anyway, between Ryzen 2 CPUs compared to Ryzen 1 CPUs. Now, as far as memory goes, I tested it just with 2666 memory, just a 16 gigabyte kit, as I didn't want to have any memory issues. And if we jump into the first benchmark, which was Cinebench, we see that it's pretty much the same. There's nothing in it. It's all within margin of error, so nothing really to see here. When we go over to Handbrake, it's interesting, though. You can see that it's slightly lower on the X470. Now, that may just be motherboard things. I'm not really too sure. Uh, why that is, but it was slightly lower on uh, in Handbrake. And when we go over to PC Mark 10, we see the productivity wise, it was way, way higher on X470. Like, really high. I don't know what went on then. And even in the content creation, it was a bit higher, although that's more heading towards the margin of error. Look, you know, pretty big margin of error, but, but it's still, it's, it's, it's not as huge as what we saw with the productivity. Then in uh, 3D Mark V Strike, see the physics score is margin of error, you know, very similar. And uh, the combined test, again, is margin of error, so not much to see there. So what does it really mean? Well, aside from the handbrake and the PC Mark test, which PC Mark is a bit of a funny benchmark to use. Um, it's changed a lot. There's a lot of updates, and it might just be something like compatibility-wise between X370 and X470. There's something going on there. I do not know. With Handbrake, that one's a bit more consistent because all it is is a 1080p render. Uh, I think with that, why you're seeing it be slightly lower is maybe something to do with the power delivery or something like that, and it's allowing the 2600X here to just ha hold slightly higher boost speeds and maybe that's the case there. But overall, uh, there's no difference. You'll notice I didn't show any games. There was no point because they're all the same or within margin of error in terms of their performance. So there wasn't anything really there to see. So as far as the question goes, if you've got an X370 motherboard, especially a good one like this one, is there a point going up to X470? No, not really. If you have an X370 and you haven't updated the BIOS on it, <laughs> oh boy, you really need to get onto that. Uh, because that fixes a lot of issues that they've had. But as far as should you upgrade, no. There's really no point. The main thing I've noticed as a reviewer who tested X370 and Ryzen 1 at launch and uh, X470 and Ryzen 2 right on launch is that uh, it's been a lot easier with X470. Go ask any other tech reviewer that did Ryzen stuff from launch both times and they'll tell you the same thing. We had so much trouble with memory and just random Windows problems and other things with X370. And all those problems are seemingly gone with X470. You can run memory at its rated speed straight out of the box. You know, no BIOS updates necessary with X470. So that's something to consider. Uh, if you do have an X370 as well and you're wanting to use a Ryzen 2 CPU like a 2600X, you're going to need to update your BIOS. If you do not do that, when you put the CPU in, all you're going to get is a black screen. So make sure you update the BIOS with your Ryzen 1 CPU, say you have a, 20, uh, a 1600 or a 1600X or something, uh, make sure you update the BIOS first, very important, and then slot in your Ryzen 2 CPU because a lot of people are not doing that and are wondering why their Ryzen 2 CPU doesn't work. It's not that plug and play. Would be great if it was, but it isn't quite that plug and play yet. 
Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think caused the differences in those uh, similar tests, like the handbrake test and the PC Mark 10 test. I'd really like to know if you have another theory. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.